Well, just before we came on air tonight, the Education Secretary, Mike Russell, came into our Edinburgh studio. I asked him, after today's introduction of a legal cap of 25 on primary one class sizes, what were the parents of the 26 pupil to do? Well, the parents of the 26 pupil will be in another class. They'll get better education because of that. Uh, so I think this is of no detriment to them whatsoever. Indeed, this will improve Scottish education. The smaller class sizes uh, do improve education, particularly in the early years. And the SNP government has delivered the smallest class sizes in primary in Scotland's history. Right, so there will be no cases where parents can't get their child into a school that they want to get their child into because of this new rule. Well, there are, of course, issues about how local authorities deliver education with individual schools that are overpopular or on the boundaries between authorities, and that is a difficulty for authorities. But I would have thought it's far better that local authorities stop spending money on fighting legal cases and start spending that money on ensuring that schools are of the highest standard, because some of these schools have had to fight these cases again and again. All of us know, well, not all of us, I have to say I was very astonished today that the Tories stood against these uh, regulations. All the other parties know that smaller class sizes work. They know it improves education for every child. And the right way to do that is a combination of persuasion uh, to get uh, the class sizes in the smaller, uh, in the lower primaries down. And that's what I've been doing with trying to move towards a class size of 18 or, or below in primaries 1, 2 and 3. And we're making progress. It's hard to do. Right. But also so making sure there's a cap in uh, primary 1. Now, we consulted widely on this. And every single local authority that responded, 20 three of them said they wanted this and they wanted to be oh, able to I'm sure to the local this. authorities want it. What would you say to a parent uh, whose child, because of this new rule, has to go to a primary school whose results are palpably inferior because the local authority can now say, sorry, we're full up and you no longer have any legal right to challenge well, us. What I would say to any parent is that I think that the school that their children go to is, has to be a good school. If there is any fear that it isn't a good school, then I'm sure parents should be very active in saying that and working on that. What I wouldn't encourage is parents to believe, for one reason or another, that the only possibility for their children is to force the issue legally and to create the type of difficulties that have been created in one or two schools and authorities. I'm sorry, what is wrong with parents? And I think what? that's very wrong for the child themselves. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't what, think what is wrong this with parents wanting the best for, for the their vast children? The majority of parents. What is wrong with parents wanting to get their child into the best school in the area? Absolutely nothing well, wrong with that Well, why are you bringing in a law whatsoever. against it? it? There's no law against it. That's, that's precisely utter, what they say. That's an utter misrepresentation of what has been done. That is the line that was being run by the Tory education spokesperson. The reality of this is this improves education for the vast, overwhelming majority of children because having smaller class sizes in the early primary years makes a real difference. Now, I'm very proud of the fact that we've continued with that and pushed it hard as it is. And these regulations make it, take it a step forward. There has been a legal maximum, uh, a legal maximum of 30, but the previous administration wanted it at 25. They did hee-haw about it. Right. What we but have I'll done back is the... made sure that it is going to happen and it will help the vast majority of children to get a better education. That's right. I what come we back should to be this about. I come back to my point that this is a new law for the producers, not for the parents. Absolutely. Well, what, what, absolutely. Hang on. Listen, what if, parents, what if, hang on. What, hang on. are going to benefit from smaller class sizes. And oh, really? In Scotland, oh, course, really? What, because well, every what if child I'm a parent, in a smaller hang class on. size will be better off. Right. What if I'm a parent and I say, look, I don't care if my child can go to a school along the road which has rotten exam results in primary seven, right, or rotten uh, attainment in primary seven, but which has got class sizes of 22 uh, or 23. I, don't, I want my, parent, my child in the school which has got excellent results which has got Gordon, class sizes of are, 28 Gordon, and which I'm now being legally prevented from doing. You, you are manufacturing circumstances that do not I'm not exist. manufacturing them at all. The only reason you're bringing this in is to stop real parents exist. taking you real are, legal cases. You, you, you are in actual fact representing something that is untrue. 
The reality of the situation is that in virtually every school in Scotland, the quality of education is improved by having smaller class sizes. I accept if there are one or even two such circumstances in Scotland where schools are demonstrably poorer than they should be, then by a quick combination of work from Her Majesty's inspectors by the local authorities and others, the quality of those schools should be improved. But to represent Scottish education the way you're representing it is actually untrue. Right. And what the, the BBC is now doing is telling people things that aren't true. What they should be doing is telling people that smaller class sizes are really good and that progress is being made in Scotland. I don't think it's the job of the BBC to constantly misrepresent and run down things. What is important in Scotland is getting better education and one of the ways you do it, in addition to having curriculum for excellence and a variety of other things, is having those smaller class sizes in the early years. So today's a day when we should be celebrating progress we've made, not oh, right. carping in the way you are doing. Right, so if I'm being so misrepresentational, you will now be able to give a guarantee to every parent in Scotland that they will, under no circumstances, not get their child into the school of their choice that's not true. and not that's be deprived not of the of opportunity to take true. legal action there against the school be, which refuses them. There will them. be occasions where that is not possible as there are now. Right, well that but was the point I was making. to represent it in a way to spend this entire period of the programme this entire period of the programme. Instead of saying Scottish education is making substantial progress in these regards and if there are problems for any family then they need to take that up and the local authority needs to solve that. But to represent that as the majority issue on this day is frankly nonsense, Gordon. But in, nonsense. in England they use competition amongst parents to get their children to the best schools as a way of trying to raise the level well, of schools and close down uh, bad ones. Well, Here we bring in a law against no, it. No, 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 absolutely. Another misrepresentation. The glib way in which you talk about this matter reveals <laughs> how little you know about it. I spent, for example, just last month, I spent some time with two Scots parents who lived in a suburb of London who talked about the nightmare they had in terms of the educational experience, the type of competition that existed, how dreadful it was, how people were taking up religious faiths to which they had no adherence just to get their kids into that religious school. Right, okay. Now the reality in Scotland is that does not happen. All right, what happens in Scotland is that we have high quality education and where that does not exist, I and many others will take action to make sure it does exist. Right. Can, but can your I... misrepresentation is wrong and you should not be doing it. <laughs> All right. Um, Lou, I want to ask you briefly about something else. This literacy plan. Mm. Just explain to me what you're going to do. I mean, obviously, we can understand what's happening in schools. What are you going to do outside schools? There was talk of that, but, but, but I'm not quite clear what it is. Well, one of the things we're going to do is talk to the broadcasters like yourself about leading by example, making sure that there are the highest standards of, of written and spoken English in the media generally, uh, so that, in actual fact, you set a good example to the rest of Scotland. One of the things we're going to do is emphasize the need for adult literacy. One of the things we're going to do is to work very hard on the diagnosis of learning difficulties, which uh, is something that does affect some children. And uh, we need to make sure that that is, frankly, nipped in the bud. We have a whole range of actions that we're going to take, bringing together the agencies in Scotland. For the okay. first time since devolution, we've got a plan to move on this issue, and I'm very pleased about that. This is a good day for Scottish education. It's a pity that uh, you are so curmudgeonly about it. I'd like to encourage you to be much more positive than you are. Right, well, in my most curmudgeonly way possible, but with a positive undertone, I'll have to tell you we've run out of time. Mike, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much.